Like, before we get into today's video, I want to make a quick announcement. I sold over 200 pop figures from my collection over the last two days. You know, I kept a lot of my Spider-Man ones or my Transformers ones, but a lot of the miscellaneous ones or ones I didn't really care for anymore, I sold them. You know, that was just something that I kind of lost interest with. You know, I'll still collect them here and there, you know, get some Spider-Man pops, but mostly I'm just going to stick to the Spider-Man ones now. His epic tale begins. Hey guys, it's Chris, and in today's video, I'm talking about Scoob. Let's get into it. Scoob was released back in 2020 and features Scooby-Doo and the gang's origin story. Scoob is a reboot of the theatrical Scooby-Doo movie franchise. Scoob is the third theatrical movie released based on these characters. Set in a Hannibal Barra animated shared universe, Scoob follows Mystery Incorporated working with the Blue Falcon to stop Dick Dasterly's evil plan to unleash the Cerberus. Dick Dasterly also wants to rescue his dog Muttley and steal the Underworld's treasure. Fun fact, the Cerberus has appeared in the Scooby-Doo mythos before in a DC comic issue called Scooby-Doo Team-Up number 19 features the Cerberus and in an episode of What's New Scooby-Doo. It's all Greek to Scooby-Doo. First, the positives. The animation is the best Scooby-Doo in the gang has ever looked in an animated movie. Scooby-Doo looks good, even as a puppy. The gang looks like updated versions of their live action counterparts with just some altercations. Scoob has a sense of nostalgia. They really like to reference the past and what has come before it. My personal favorite reference is you can see a poster of the Hex Girls when they're in the arcade and they're getting chased by Dick Dashley. The Scooby-Doo Where Are You opening theme song intro replicated with the new animation was a treat to hardcore fans. I love how they reference the original series, which a lot of Scooby-Doo animated movies do, or even a lot of just Scooby-Doo medium. They always love to reference Scooby-Doo Where Are You. Even decades later, Scooby-Doo Where Are You opening theme song still slaps and really gets me excited to watch some Scooby-Doo. I personally like when Scooby-Doo movies make Shaggy and Scooby the main focus. And Scoob really makes the main focus about Shaggy and Scooby. Scoob really shows us how important Shaggy and Scooby's friendship are with each other. They may fight, they may grow apart from each other, but in the end, they know their friendship is the most valuable thing. I mean, when Shaggy was lonely and didn't have any friends, who do you think became his friend? Scooby. Yeah, Shaggy adopted him and gave him his name, but Scooby and Shaggy have been friends since the beginning. Next, the negatives. If you're not a fan of Scooby-Doo, you'll just find this is a cliched animated superhero movie with Scooby-Doo. Scoob has no central mystery. You know, there's not no mystery aspect to Scoob. And what's the whole point of Scooby-Doo and the gang, Mystery Incorporated? They solve mysteries. We all know the bad guy or supervillain is Dick Dashley. We know it's him. And even at the end, they try to do a double on masking. Oh, Dick Dashley. Oh, take off his mask. It's actually Simon Cowell. Oh no, you take off his mask. It's actually Dick Dashley. It's just disappointing, you know? It's like if you're gonna do Scooby-Doo with superheroes at least have a mystery. Scoob prioritizes action over mystery solving. Scoob's animation is the most pleasing aspect of this outing. Like I said, the animation is really good. Shaggy and Scooby's friendship is the heart of Scoob. I mean, they're even the humor. They get a lot of the jokes. Drop some F-bombs. Come on, dude, keep this PG. Falcon bombs. <laughs> A lot of the humor, you know, whack-a-mole, and then he comes out as, out as a baby. Aww, douche. <laughs> so Shaggy and Scooby have a lot of the humor, and they are the heart of Scoob. Scooby-Doo mixed with superheroes could have been unique for the Scooby-Doo franchise, but the execution felt unnecessary. Who even asked for this? 
I mean, Warner Brother was probably like, all right, we own DC. We've owned them for years now. So what's really popular right now? Superheroes. Well, why don't we mix Scooby-Doo with superheroes? It's like Warner Brothers executives. What were you thinking? Not everything needs to be mixed with superheroes. And I don't think Scooby-Doo needed to be mixed with superheroes. You don't need to keep rebooting it and trying to essentially pair it with what's the popular trend right now. Like I said, who even asked for this? <laughs> no one. That's who. I mean, at least no Scooby-Doo fans asked for this. <laughs> Scoob tastes like a stale Scooby snack sitting on Warner Brothers' desk waiting for them to dust off this franchise and give it another shot at the old glory days. Who's ever working at Warner Brothers writing these Scooby-Doo movies? It's just, it's just awful. They don't care for the property. And that's what I really hate about Warner Brothers is that it feels like they're ashamed of Scooby-Doo. I mean, if you've been watching a lot of my Scooby-Doo videos lately, I'm a big Scooby-Doo fan. And even before I started YouTube or even when I started YouTube, I didn't really want to come out and say I was a fan of Scooby-Doo. I was kind of like Warner Brothers myself. I was ashamed. I thought, oh, he likes Scooby-Doo. He likes a cartoon. But now that I've done quite a few videos on Scooby-Doo, I've come out and said on camera, I'm not ashamed of Scooby-Doo. I love Scooby-Doo. I'm ranting, but it just makes me so mad how Warner Brothers treats the Scooby-Doo franchise. I'm Spider-Man Chris, and I'll see you in the next one.